Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and this is a video with follow-up thoughts on hunters and gatherers and I really hate to see that name stick, I don't want that name to stick so forget I said it, but remember it for now Hunters and gatherers, I described them earlier in the video as related to ADHD personality traits and ADHD is to some extent influenced by a personality or genetic marker that is completely normal and has been historically completely a positive but perhaps also some degree of disorders and issues and difficulties along with it that's what makes a person get diagnosed with ADHD uh, the personality traits of a gatherer type together with some form of dysfunction that makes it difficult to adjust to normal relations work situations and to school situations now I believe that a good example of a person with ADHD traits and a high amount of success in society is Da Vinci. Study his notes, his mind map, his brainstorm charts, study his uh, jumping from different topics to medicine to, uh, to all kinds of different pursuits, to mechanics, to engineering, to uh, invention, to science, to natural science, to philosophy, to poetry. He was interested in everything and he was a broad type. A person that studied the world from many angles, from many possibilities. He was a diverse thinker. He refused to specialize. And that is one survival technique. I believe that if you are a hunter or gatherer, that boils down to one simple thing. And that is how aggressive you are. Or how aggressive you are about what you believe. I believe that a person that is a hunter, when challenged on what they believe or what they think or in school or at work, is more likely to push forward, to persevere, to stand up for what they believe in and to keep uh, moving forward. The hunter is a fierce type, a, a person that's built with a high ability to stand up for themselves and to say, hey, I'm not taking this shit. And I have encountered people uh, that are INFJs that are more aggressive and INFJs that are more docile or more tame. INFJs that are more likely to avoid confrontation and to move forward to the next place. And I think that is at the center of it all. A person that is less aggressive is going to be more like a gatherer, more broad, because instead of following through on a confrontation, when confronted, they are more likely to seek another route. Okay, this path was blocked. I'll find a new one. Okay, this was as far as I got here. Now I create a new one. Okay, this was how far I got here. Now I create a new path. The INFJ can be highly structured and organized in setting up visions and following through on and moving towards a set idea. But, some INFJs, when challenged on this idea, are likely to persevere and to keep moving forward, where other INFJs are more likely to say, okay, this was as far as I could take this idea, I need to make adjustments to this idea so that I can keep on going. And when you make adjustments, you somewhat compromise the essence of the idea. And that makes you, to some extent, move forward or redirect. You can, may still be pursuing the edges of that idea or you might have a broader essence of it all but you're somewhat compromising the initial direction you set so some INFJs are going to say, say I want to do this and then they're gonna do everything to make that happen they're gonna use every available resource and they're gonna be highly aggressive in pursuing that idea where some INFJs are going to be much more pacifistic in advancing this idea they will say okay I'll try to use uh, the path of least resistance. And that's the essence of it. I believe the essence of being a hunter or gatherer has to do with what path you choose for yourself. And um, being a judger or a perceiver, it all boils down to that simple question of uh, how organized and how structured you are in advancing an idea. NGA, being an NGA type, is about valuing self-direction, creating your own path for yourself, creating your own journey, your own career, 
creating your own idea. Uh, it's about walking without being controlled by anyone. It's about being autonomous from other people. And yeah, it's also about speculation and prediction and judging how like an idea is to work in practice and to think of and to see how you can make an idea happen. And uh, that's the extent of the judging. You can be an INFJ that is a judging type, but also a gatherer type. You can be an INFJ with ADHD. And I want to mark this point because it's the real point I'm trying to make. Uh, and this goes to the ENFPs and the ENTPs I met. Some of you are going to have ADHD traits. And some of you are not. And this does not mean that one of you is mistyped. ENFPs are not the ADHD type, and having ADHD does not make you an ENFP or an ENTP. The fact that you don't have ADHD that does not mean that you are not an ENFP or an ENTP. You can be a disciplined and fierce ENFP or ENTP, and I've seen several, I know several, very well. ENFPs that are champions in the sense of being able to stand up for their beliefs and their convictions when challenged on it, the ability to strong, a strong ability to say no when questioned, the strong ability to stand up for themselves and for the weak. That is um, a quality that a lot of ENFPs possess that I admire highly. Now, I believe there is a lot less, a lot more <laughs> to do when finding out what this trait is. And this video is just a starting point, but I hope it can provide some additional perspectives and higher understanding. That's all for today. Hope you all for watch. Thank you all for watching. What the fuck? Uh, worst ending ever.